Good. I knew that my dreams were meant for me. And I knew that someday you would happen to come my way and you came for me. Oh, Hi, I'm Carolina Casperena, and this is Visions of Inspiration. Welcome to my show. I've got some dynamic people here on my show. One of them just doesn't sit still. I mean, I'm not going to tell you who that one is. But anyway, we've got people here that are just making a difference in this world. And uh, they belong to a lot of organizations. they got their own business going on. There's just a lot of good things happening. And I'm very honored and pleased to have them on my show. I'd like to introduce JC. Thank you. Richie. Hi, David. I can't reach you. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on my show. Thank, I'm, you, Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm very impressed. Um, one, um, I met you first, uh, JC and, uh, and, and David. I think what, what really impressed me the most was the fact that I was having a fundraiser and you were so eager to help. You don't see that a lot. You know, you, you see a lot of people, well, what are you going to give me first? You know, you weren't there. You were like, okay, you need help? I'm right there to help you. And you walked through me all the way. Even though you didn't show up to the fundraiser, which you couldn't because there was something going on that was very important, you did buy a table for me. And, and the company that bought the table, what was the name of it? Oh, it's uh, Central Home Mortgage. We're a division of Sucasa Central. Yeah, and, and what does that mean? Uh, basically, we're in the mortgage business. Uh, we're considered more of the Spanish die tech. Uh, we're pretty big. We do a lot of infomercials and TV, radio, so on uh -huh. and so on. Oh, so you could have bought two tables. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's a next one going, coming up next year. <laughs> right, we'll be there. Yeah. I'd like for you to uh, share a little bit about yourself. And, uh, and basically, I think all of you are pretty much, you know, you know what they say, um, uh, tell me who your friends are. And I'll tell you who you are. Do you believe that? Yes, that's true. And and you're all involved in, in making a difference in this world with all these kids and people and, and, and all of that. And to me, you know, it's, it's, it's doing what we're supposed to be doing here. So share a little bit about yourself. Please. Well, I'm a native from Los Angeles. I was born and raised in L.A. in the Echo Park area. Went to Belmont High School, graduated from there. Joined Were you a cholo? Uh, halfway. Okay. <laughs> but uh, I joined the military, so I joined the biggest gang in the world. Ah. The U.S. Army. And now, how did you feel when you joined the service? Very proud. Yeah? Very proud. Had an opportunity to see the world. Did you? Yes, better than where I was at before. Yeah. See the world the way it is. So you were able to, to see what it's like with our troops right now. Yes, fighting for I relate us. to the troops today. That's why you, yeah. you just were so eager to help out. Cause we're it was a brotherhood. So yeah, we're out, we have to help each other. Yeah, and if uh, for the, I say the civilians, if they don't understand the meaning of service to this country, they should be able to have a chance to sit down with a veteran and, and share some of the, his experiences, oh, that would some be of nice. his beliefs. Yeah, that's that's nice. So, you're involved in a lot of things. Yes, quite a few things. Uh, okay. I'm a member of uh, the, the Lions Club of East Los Angeles. We're actually new members. Uh, I've been wanting to join the Lions Club for quite a while uh -huh. uh, because of other people that I know that have been there. Uh, what I wanted to join, first of all, because they have awesome programs there for the uh, community, the Vision Program, yeah. the Special Olympics. I have a son that's ADHD, oh. so I try to get more participate more in that because I can relate to the situation. Mm -hmm. uh, they have quite a few things, events, fundraisers. We're actually one of the great, biggest organizations worldwide that's contributed uh, money to the tsunami <coughs> That's how powerful the organization is. Yeah. Uh, I'm a member of the uh, Montebello Board of Realtors, um, American Legion, uh, Eugene Abregon, Post 804, here in Cesar Chavez, and uh, National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals. There's been other organizations, organizations I've been members of, but these have been more the most active because uh, each one gets involved with the community in certain ways. Mm -hmm. Why are you doing all of this? Uh, one is uh, to better myself in redemption, to make up for the time that I've lost when I was younger and the mistakes I've made. To make myself better. So, how do you find it working for you? It's working excellent. 
considering all the uh, barriers that I've had uh, put up in front of me. It works. Mm. It works to go out there and meet other people and get involved and help other people without asking for anything back. Yeah. It's kind of like Coming a, from your heart. Yeah, it comes from my heart. It's, it's yeah. something I enjoy doing because it's life. Right. Enjoying life instead of staying home and not doing anything about it. I don't think you could do that. No, I can't. <laughs> okay, let me sh let's share a little bit, Richie, about you about yourself. Well, How do you know these two? How do I know these two? Are well, they are they keep holding you hostage <laughs> right here? Yeah, I'm the little guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the young one. <laughs> there you go, that one too. <laughs> well, this is my business partner, JC. Um, we met about a year and a half, actually almost two years ago now. And uh, he had the opportunity to meet David here through JC, which uh, that's a privilege in itself because he's a great person. Uh -huh. um, but myself, let's see, I'm from the Montebello area, grew up there, uh, raised in that area, went to Montebello High School, graduated from there. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, ex Army infantry. So Me I, too. Yes. So ah. I kind of know what the soldiers are going through and the hardships of living out in the in the dirt and sleeping out there oh. and all the, the the cold food and the cold environment oh. and the hot environment, you name it. I, I truly understand what they're going through and I'm thankful for what they're doing for us. Yeah. So you're involved in a lot of organizations also, right? Yes, I'm pretty new getting started. This is all a new uh, venture for me, which mm -hmm. it's something I've been wanting to do. I've been trying to seek out which organizations I wanted to be part of. Uh, just recently, actually about a year ago, I joined the American Legion, post-804, Eugene ah. Overdone, and uh, now I'm a new Lion member, and uh, actually this weekend, the Farm Workers uh, Association, you know, Cesar Ch uh, Chavez, his birthday just passed, um, mm -hmm. it's either going to have a march this weekend, they're going to come into East LA College, that's another event that if people want to come on down, it's a great opportunity to come down. And, When's uh, that going to happen? That's this Saturday, oh. uh, what is that, the first, second, mm -hmm. Saturday, April 2nd. Oh. Why are you involved in all this? Uh, because uh, gifts are better than, than to give than to receive. That, that's the bottom, bottom line, really, to, to give rather than to receive. And what are your feelings by doing that? My feelings? Your feelings. <clears throat> what are your feelings when you do this? What do you feel? What do you get out of it? Well, I'm not, look, I'm not looking to get anything out of it or, or have any great feelings. It's more of about helping others and doing for others. Because if I was in a position where I needed help, it would be mm -hmm. grateful and it, to receive that myself. Mm -hmm. But a feeling comes through helping. Um, because when, when you're helping and, and, and being there for other people, there's a feeling that comes through you. Do, can you describe that feeling? Well, that feeling in truth, in truth is all about God, and He's the one that's given me this opportunity to give. So that's where I'm thankful for. Okay, good, good. Okay, anything else? I'll come back to you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's go with David here. Okay, David. David, say your last name. Inojosa. Huh, I'm glad I didn't try to say it. <laughs> Richie, what's your last name? Rivera, with a B. As with a boy. Really? Yeah, I've different. never seen a last name like that. JC. Ospina. Oh. oh my goodness, I'm glad I had you guys say it. <laughs> okay. David, share a little bit about what you do. Um, uh, what I do for a living, I'm, I'm a mortgage lender. Do you like that? I, I, I enjoy it very much. I've been doing it for almost eight years now. Okay. Yes. And it's, uh, it's, a very, it's very worthwhile. Okay. And uh, uh, about some of the things that I get organized with, uh, well, Starting out very young, uh, my family, uh, my mother, father, and, and many uncles and, and aunts have put together projects of, of gathering uh, used clothing, donated used clothing, oh. and also, and also uh, used toys, because sometimes kids have toys that they don't play anymore, and the parents feel that it just, they're just sitting around taking a mm -hmm. room. So we, we go out and spread the word to get, we, well, we used to uh, get all these items and then take them to Mexico and take them to... Uh, to some of the poorer families or, oh. or to some of the, even the orphanages. We used to take a lot of used clothing and used toys to the orphanages. And, and it's something that, that, that we enjoyed. One thing that my dad always uh, wanted to do was that we, we do this, we don't tell them we're coming. We uh -huh. just show up and, wow. and, and pass all this, all this stuff out. You know, that's interesting. How do you find these people? How, how do you know what part of Mexico to go or, or, or where to find these people? I mean, well, how? You'd be surprised I mean, just, just by looking uh, you'll find them you'll find people that are so you just go at random 
whoever you find, you just station there and start? Absolutely. Uh, or, or do you go to the same people? We, we, actually, we used to get most of our information from churches, from local churches. Mm. Uh, we, we'd, go to, uh, we'd go to Tijuana, Mexicali, uh, San Luis, Ensenada, and, uh, and anywhere we can just drive and be able to take all this, all this, uh, all this stuff down there. And uh, we'd start asking churches, and they would point us, help point us in the right direction. So, what else are you involved in? Uh, I'm uh, I'm also a veteran myself. Uh, I'm a former I'll Marine. I'll have you. Cool. Yeah. I, I, I served in the Marine Corps, and uh, I'm a member also of the American Legion, post-804, uh, uh -huh. Eugene Obregón. Um, <coughs> uh, I'm also a member of the National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals. Of course, we try to urge home ownership to the Latino community. And uh, I'm also a member of Lions uh, as well. Mm -hmm. uh, that's actually JC J. Ospina. I've known him for a good uh, seven years now. Yeah. And, uh, and he's really urged me to, to continue to, to go along. And, and this is something where I get a lot of inspiration from him. And uh, we, we actually, all of us, we, yeah. uh, uh, yeah, we help each other out. Yeah. yeah. yeah we're not competitors. We, we work with each other because we uh -huh. have the same goal, yeah. you know, same that's concept, helping other people. You know, talking about the, the mortgage and, and how the houses went up and, you know, my, my daughter, my oldest daughter is a teacher and with her income and two kids and, and uh, you know, she has a hard time. It's she tough. tried to buy a house. She can't buy a house right now. Well, as being it's a member of NARIP, uh, our founder, Gary Acosta, actually it started out of Montebello. Uh, four or five years ago, right, David? Uh, year 2000. 2000. Now we're 20,000 strong nationwide. Uh, Gary speaks before Congress now regarding the housing issue. Plus, we were able to implement the program for people that come over to this country without the proper documentation where the federal government will give them a, an ID number to pay their taxes, hence giving them an opportunity to buy a home. Aww. So we try to work with that. And that's one of the biggest pleasures for me is to work with a, a family that comes to this country, Latino, uh -huh. Because my responsibility as an American is to teach other people to be an American and to understand the laws and, and, and the benefits of this country mm -hmm. and to push them with that concept. And when I see them accomplish their goal, is owning their first home. And you have to understand a lot of these people come from uh, uh, the jungles, the desert. You know, I've been in some of those countries as a military and I understand you know, uh -huh. the poverty issues. When they come over here to, to accomplish a goal, I don't care if it's in Watts or Compton, yeah. just to own a property down there. It satisfies me because those people remember you and you can see it in their faces. Oh. And it's a really a, a great accomplishment okay. because I am contributing to something. Oh. Okay, now I'm going to come back to you right now, David. But, hmm. JC, what, what feeling comes over you? Can you describe it when you, when you do these things and you see their faces and you see what you have accomplished? What feeling goes over you? Satisfaction and then uh, peace with God. Mm. That God knows I'm looking out for other people. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do to wow. share with other human beings. It's not always about us. Yeah. I mean, we have our benefits in this business, but th that doesn't mean anything if it, if it doesn't fill you here. It's like anything else in the, it, that you do in life. If you're not happy with it, you're you're not gonna you're gonna stagnate. Yeah, that's true. David, same question. Uh, basically, what what uh. Well, being a kid, uh, you know, you do, sometimes we wouldn't understand what we're doing. Uh -huh. We wouldn't understand the purpose of what we're doing. Uh, you know, sometimes, you know, myself and my brothers, we kind of thought of it as, as a chore, as, as a job to do. Uh, but growing then later up. on, as, as, as we started, began growing up, then we started to feel what the purpose was in it. And, oh. uh, and knowing that, that there are other people that, that, that do need that kind of help. And, uh, and it's nice to see, uh, I, I, I ran across a few other people that have been involved in helping out and, and my uncles and so forth, and see them going on and, and continue to help other people. You know, it's, it's very satisfying to see that. And it, it just gives you a, a very good, warm feeling. Yeah. It's something that, you know, to be honest with you, that, you know, like the saying goes, money can't buy. That's right. Money can't buy that feeling. That's right. That, um, you know what I do here? It's it's all donated. It's donated. I mean, my time, and um, you know, it's interesting because when I first started off doing this, um, I didn't want to do it. I was nervous. I had my grandkids on the show because I wasn't. Inti I didn't feel intimidated with them. And one day, I felt like I just said, "This is what I want you to do." And after that, it came so easy. I mean, I never have problems getting people on my show, but I'm very selective because I want people that have, you know, that have this heart about them that want to make a difference in the world. And I asked a man, 
one day on my show, I said, how do you know it's from God? And his answer was, because it feels good and I'm doing it for nothing. That's true. true. (coughs) So that's what I feel it's happening with you guys. Absolutely. You were going to say something. Um, I was going to, I'm just going to add on that, uh, that (coughs) what I was mentioning before, like like, uh, when I was younger, you know, my dad would, uh, you know, I, I would, of course, you know, being a kid, uh-huh. I would bring friends of mine home, well, you, know, you know, to play, of course, to play at home. And, uh, of course, some of these kids were, were kids that, that maybe they were uh, either had broken broken families, either they didn't have a father, didn't have a mother, uh, maybe they didn't live, you know, in, in a home, uh, or maybe they shared an apartment with other family. Yeah. And my dad, I would see my dad, uh, <coughs> he would, he would uh, invite these kids. <coughs> He would invite these kids along with us, you know, to go to the park, to play baseball, uh, to, you know, you know, and, and so I, I, I think that I see a lot of these things coming from my dad. Huh. What, what he's really, you know, because you know, my, my dad has always told me stories of the way he grew up, uh-huh. you know, the things that he didn't have, and so he's, I guess he's, he's urging me to do the same thing to help wow. out those people who don't, who don't have, who don't have the, the, the very basic things, you know, something things that we take, we take for granted. We take many yeah. things for granted. You know, for example, uh, you know, here in Southern California, you know, going to Disneyland is just pretty much like a, just a, a, almost yeah. a normal thing. Yeah. But to many people, there's, there's, they can't, it's, it's unimaginable that they can do that. Yeah. You know, so that's something that it's, that's enjoyable for us to help those people. So you, for you, you have your, your parents to be thankful for that they raised you in a manner that they showed you how to give. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and it doesn't happen to everybody. No, no. As a matter of fact, we're, we're still we're still trying to figure out something else to do. <laughs> oh, God. We're still working on something else. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How about you, Richie? Did you come from that type of environment? No, I came more from fending for myself. Ah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So so these these two men here are also teaching you. Teachers. And working I think with we're you. all teachers, and we all help each other. We try to hold each other account- accountable, and uh-huh. uh, and help each other understand what our weaknesses are, so we can better ourselves. Because that that's something also us as individuals need uh-huh. people to help us with that. We can't always do it by ourselves. Yeah. Let me add on to that. You know, we're an age difference of ten years. Richie's uh, pretty knowledgeable for his age. He's had his experiences in life, so uh, so have I. But we always have that moment in the office where we'll interchange what, hey, we shouldn't be doing this, or uh-huh. we should be doing this properly, or or we should helping we should be helping somebody in our office out <coughs> that works for us to better themselves, not only in the business, but as far as you know their outlook in life. Yeah. And, and I think that helps because that's that's our business, but it's not always about the business itself. It's about trying to help people get ahead and yeah. giving an opportunity because those doors open real wide if you look for them. They're there. You just got to find them. Yeah. And I find them all the time. Well, I read somewhere <clears throat> that a lot of the million, millionaires that are out there are because they've given, you know, of themselves and, and money, and they, you know, have just really given from their heart. And they say, you know, I keep giving and giving and, and thinking that maybe my money will run out, but I keep getting more and more money, you know. And that's basically how I think it is. And And for me... Um, everything that I've done, because I also work with youth at risk kids, and the feeling that I get is, is like, what an awesome gift that I've been given, you know, to be able to open doors with, with kids and youth, that, because I've been there, done that, you know, to be able to, because also I'm a facilitator in the DUI school, to be able to walk in those rooms and, and see people growing right in front of me and know that I had a little bit a little part in it, you know, um, it gives me more growth and more ability to succeed in what I know I'm supposed to be doing. The more I do it, the more I know this is what God wants me to do, and the more my direction is so much clearer. You're absolutely right. I, I just wanted to mention also that it's nice to, to be among those people who are also involved in organizations, for example, in, in, the, uh, in the Lions Club to see the members in there so involved and, yeah. and so passionate about what they're doing, it, it rubs off. It yeah. just, you know, you, you want to get involved even more. 
You know, and sometimes, you know, we, we procrastinate and we say that, well, why don't have the time for that? Uh -huh. If you really want to uh -huh. do it, you'll be surprised. You'll, you'll make the time. And, you know, and for example, in our, in our work schedules, you know, a typical daily work schedule for us is maybe, what, 12, 14 hours a day, you say? Wow. That we work. About. And we, we make time. We make time to do, our, to do what we need to do and also, of course, spend time with our families. You know, but, uh, but yeah, it, it's, 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 a, it's how you say it's, it's a, well, I don't want to say hate-love relationship. I wouldn't say that. But it's something <laughs> that you do love. You do love to do. You do enjoy it. You, do enjoy it. you want to be there. Uh, the, the next events coming up or whatever we have planned in, in one of our organizations, you know, with NARIP, we travel all over the nation meeting other agents and sharing their, uh -huh. you know, their experiences and stuff. Experience yeah. And you know, and meeting the different uh, types of people from different states and then even within our own community. You know, it, it's interesting. Yeah. You know, and it, it opens a lot of doors. It's just, I really believe if you don't get involved in your community, then you're not part of the community. That's true. You know, That's you're just true. on the sideline, just waiting for something to happen. And you need to do something about it. It doesn't matter where you come from or what you do for a living. Uh -huh. If you get involved in the community, you become part of it and you can make things happen for yourself mm -hmm. or for the community or for the loved ones around you. Now, what do you think about all of these kids that are getting themselves in trouble? Um, do you have any idea why that's happening? Yeah, it's, uh, it's more the, uh, the expression, TV, radio, you know, all the, the freedom that we have, the liberalness that mm -hmm. we have in our community now and uh, the misdirection. I mean, don't get me wrong, I grew up mischievous by myself, but uh, my mother raised three of us by herself as an immigrant who was able to drive out of the whole shelter, but she was always our direction, she always stayed on top of us, you know, ah. and, and she made sure. I'm the only one that graduated out of high school, out of my three brothers, I'm the oldest. Really? So, but she always stood on top of us, and to this day, she's still on top of us. Uh -oh. yeah, but that's her, that's the life she sacrificed for us, you know. Mm -hmm. She gave everything up just for us. Uh -huh. and, and I think it's really about the parent at home mm -hmm. doing his job to better the children, because mm -hmm. based on my experience and seeing what I've seen in life, mm -hmm. it's usually the, the, the fault of the parents. Not always, but the majority, I would say maybe 80%. Mm -hmm. I find that to be a chain, though. It, yeah. it goes from one parent to the next parent to the next parent. And until that one parent learns and sees their mistakes mm -hmm. that were made or what changes they need to take to better themselves and their children, then that's when it'll start to take effect. Because right. most of them have a lack of guidance and love, and that's the main problem right there. Right. But then also going back, sometimes the new parent that comes into this country, because what I'm noticing is that the new, uh, uh, the new gangs that are coming are more immigrant gangs. I mean, I grew up in the Echo Park, MacArthur Park area, and that's mm -hmm. been changed with over the last 20 years, mm -hmm. pre-gang dominant, but mm -hmm. from different cultures. So it's because the folks are always working. 24 hours working two jobs just mm -hmm. to survive in this country and, and it's the neglect that it's not their I mean I, I, won't, I don't want to say it's their fault but they have to do what they have to do to survive in this country and then uh, our job is try to you know again I feel like I need to educate the parents there's other ways you can do things mm -hmm. take the opportunity to go educate yourself or, or learn the language to you know get that oh, one step ahead because yeah most people that come to this country end up working in the restaurants or janitorial okay. and, and you know there's nothing wrong with it. it's honorable work mm -hmm. but at some point in life you have to find something to do better because it's about your family unit. If you're not there to take care of your children, then, you know, especially in those neighborhoods, it's tough yeah. to survive out of it. I mean, there's, there's so many little stories of people succeeding and coming out of there mm -hmm. compared to the people that don't. That's true. Yeah. David, what do you have to say about that? No, I was going to say, uh, when, when I was growing up, you know, I, I grew up in Baldwin Park. Mm -hmm. And I grew up in a part of Baldwin Park that, that had a gang that controlled the area. And... It wasn't until after, I guess, after when I became an adult when I finally realized that, well, when I was growing up, pretty mm -hmm. much the odds were against me already. Uh. It, it, is, it is a decision that we have to make ourselves. We have to choose what path to go. Mm -hmm. And yes, there is a lot of pressure and a lot of temptation, but that's what we have to avoid. We have to avoid that. We have to be disciplined. You know, and I use the word discipline a lot. You know, and I use that even with my kids. I use the word discipline with them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I think that's something that, that, that's something that many of us are lacking. But it's natural to lack discipline. It is. Yeah. You know, we just have to, of course, you know, you know, you know walk that line. When, when we come from a very dysfunctional family, um, we don't have that love. We don't have that, uh, that trust. We don't have that communication. 
know, because I came from an alcoholic family. And what the kids are looking for is they're looking to be loved, to be heard, you know, and 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 to and to and to trust because they lose the trust. And a lot of times um, that I've seen uh, with these kids is that it's a struggle. And I know for myself, it was a big struggle for me to to come out of where I was because it's like you you, you want to climb up it, you, you know, just like the immigrants, you know, they come from an uh, an environment where they make very little money, so they don't think very big. Right. And that's why they, a lot of times they stay there. And, and kids that go into gangs, because now they have a family, you know, where they didn't have a family at home. So now they have a family that's going to back them up. You know, codependency is very similar to the same. My codependency almost took me to my death. I wanted to fix him. I wanted to change him. I wanted to take care of him. I wanted to be there for him. I couldn't do any of that. The only one I was able to fix and change was myself, you know? So these are things that happen. Um, You guys are doing a wonderful, wonderful thing. I admire and I respect and, and I feel that because of you guys, the world will change. Well, keep in mind, we always have our barriers ahead of us. We're always going to have something, a wall that's going to be in front of us. Always. And, and I, I guess I've learned how to try to climb that wall or get around it because it's always going to happen. Knock it down. Yeah, you have to find a way to knock it down. And, uh, and and I really believe it's really where it comes from, how motivated you are in life or what are your goals in life. If, <laughs> if you really want to get ahead, you're going to push that wall aside. Yeah. No matter what happens, no matter where you're at, you know, it doesn't matter. That's you true. can do it. Well, David, Richie, and JC, it's an honor. We got to go. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks Thank so much. You. This is Carolina, Visions of Inspiration. What an awesome team. Thank you so much, and God bless you, and God bless our troops. Thank you. I knew that my dreams were meant for me. And I knew that someday you would happen to come my way and you came for me. Oh, Lord. I knew that waiting was over. I knew that the hour was here. And I just knew by your side, held your hands to Stop.